Our quote for the day from Franklin Roosevelt, the liberty of a democracy is not safe if the people tolerated the growth of private power to a point where it becomes stronger than the democratic state itself. That, in its essence, is fascism. Ownership of government by an individual, by a group, or by any controlling private power. End of quote. What a day. Uh, as we continue through the show, uh, I'm wondering, are you going to be marching anywhere in the United States? Are you going to be participating in many of the protests that are happening uh, to, uh, Saturday, you know, the, the day after the, uh, uh, after the inauguration? It is happening tomorrow. Meanwhile, I read this, this story in Huffington Post, and just it was just an absolute jaw-dropper. Uh, the headline, the domestic conspiracy that gave Trump the election is in plain sight. And I just want to share the first paragraph of this with you and then bring on, bring on its author. Uh, information presently, presently available, public and available, confirms that Eric Prince, Rudy Giuliani, and Donald Trump conspired to intimidate FBI Director James Comey into interfering in and thus directly affecting the 2016 presidential election. This conspiracy was made possible with the assistance of officers in the New York Police Department and agents within the New York Field Office of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. All of the major actors in the conspiracy have already confessed to its particulars, either in word or in deed. Moreover, all the major actors have publicly exhibited consciousness of guilt after the fact. This assessment has already been the subject of articles and news outlets on both sides of the political spectrum, but has not yet received substantial investigation by major media. I'm like, whoa, a conspiracy with Eric Prince, Rudy Giuliani, and Donald Trump? It's written by Seth Abramson. Uh, Seth is the uh, assistant and an assistant professor at the University of New Hampshire, former public defender, a columnist for the Huffington Post, the author of six books, his latest, Golden Age. His website, Seth Abramson. Uh, S-E-T-H-A-B-R-A-M-S-O-N dot net. Uh, Seth, and you can tweet him at Seth Abramson. Uh, excuse me, Seth, I've been mispronouncing your name. Uh, Dr. Abramson, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me, Tom. Abramson. <laughs> I'm sorry. So a conspiracy sitting in plain sight. Tell us about this. Well, I know that the word conspiracy causes people some pause, but in looking at the facts here, that really was the only appropriate word to use. Um, this is an election that, as you know, Tom, really shows its themes quite evidently. And I've been pulling on some of those themes, and two in particular led to this story. The first was Rudy Giuliani's, uh, frankly, bizarre behavior in the weeks leading up to the election, including a number of mentions uh, on public media, CNN, Fox News, uh, about there being an upcoming October surprise that he would not reveal, but that he thought could swing the election to Donald Trump. Uh, and then simultaneous uh, with that, the fact that, as reported by the New York Times, uh, Jim Comey wrote to Congress because, according to the Times and many other sources, he had become, quote-unquote, sure that news of the allegedly new but actually duplicate Wiener emails uh, would leak to the press if he didn't do something. Um, putting those two things together and then doing a little bit of follow-up investigation, uh, it becomes clear that uh, Director Comey feared the leak was going to come from the Trump campaign as a result of Hatch Act violative leaks to them from the FBI and NYPD, and that he wrote to Congress, which certainly did uh, swing the results of the election, because of the fact that he was essentially intimidated into doing so because he believed if he didn't speak on the uh, Clinton investigation that, in fact, false information would come out. And then finally, Tom, as you saw in the article, uh, Eric Prince is the one who previewed for all of America exactly what that false leak was going to be from the Trump campaign because he gave an interview on November 4th with Breitbart uh, in which he, I think it's fair to say, and I say this as an attorney, uh, slandered and libeled uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, stated a number of untrue facts about those duplicate emails, uh, and did so not knowing that in 24 hours, James Comey would come out and reveal that they were all duplicate emails. So we actually have a preview of how the conspiracy would have unfolded. And uh, in this case, unlike many, I see Jim Comey as someone who allowed himself to be intimidated, but may not be the primary villain of the story, as so many seem to think he is. That's interesting. So uh, to, 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 to put this in a, in a somewhat larger context, reports I've been reading suggest that Jim Comey had basically two things that if they were leaked out into the public or made public could have influenced the election. One was 
you know, more information on the Hillary Clinton emails, you know, that turned out to be nonsense, but still it would have fed the news cycle and hurt her. And the other being this uh, dodgy dossier about Donald Trump having sex with hookers in a Moscow hotel. And the Democrats, you know, I, I'm assuming at some fairly high levels, knew about both of these things, as did the Republicans. I mean, there's very few secrets in this town with at, at about that kind of thing, right? And, uh, uh, but, but there was no pressure on Comey to release the information about the Trump dossier. Uh, there was, there was no parallel conspiracy on the, on the big D Democratic side, on the Democratic Party side, uh, you know, no media conspiracy to push Comey to come out and hold a press conference and say, you know, by the way, we're also investigating links between, uh, you know, Putin, Russia, uh, Trump, prostitutes, et cetera. And so that never happened. And so Trump never got never got painted with this brush, but Hillary Clinton did because Eric Prince, Rudy Giuliani, and and uh, oh, who was and Donald Trump, and do you think Trump was you know a knowing participant in this? Were pushing him. First of all, is that a, a reasonable kind of recap of, of kind of how the end of the election happened? Uh, it is, Tom. But I would add two things um, as to the allegedly new, but in fact duplicate. Uh, Hillary Clinton emails. What's important to remember is that the FBI had possession of these starting on October 3rd, well over a month prior to the election. And I've spoken to IT professionals uh, in conjunction with E. Randall Schoenberg, the Los Angeles attorney who's been investigating a lot of this. And IT uh, professionals have confirmed that the FBI has the means and the human resources to, within uh, approximately 24 hours, confirm that even a large stock of emails, hundreds of thousands of emails, uh, as they had in early October, were in fact duplicate emails. So the FBI uh, was able to figure out almost immediately that there was no new information from the Wiener computer. Uh, this never should have dragged out as an investigation. It should not have been something that was being dealt with a week before the election. This could have been disposed of even if Director Comey wanted to write Congress. He would have been able to, by the end of the first week of October, inform Congress that new information had been found, or so they thought, but that it turned out that everything was a duplicate, so that, and I'm but, just letting but, but you know Seth, that we have duplicates. Seth, that, that information then suggests that Comey actually wasn't just, you know, a sucker or a useful idiot, that he, he or somebody in the FBI was complicit in, you know, slowing this thing down, dragging it out so that it would harm Hillary Clinton. There was incompetence on Director Comey's part. Uh, the original reports were that Director Comey didn't know anything about the Wiener emails until October 26th when he was briefed by the New York field office. Uh, in fact, further reporting revealed that he probably learned of the emails around October 7th or 8th. What he did at that point, I think, was an act of incompetence, which instead of overseeing the disposition of those emails himself, what he did is he delegated it to others and said essentially – take care of this, come back to me with a report. When they came back to him on October 26th, I think it's clear that he expected that that would be the final conclusion, that it would be confirmed to him that they were duplicate emails. He could put it to bed, frankly, by not telling anyone, because at that point the investigation would have stayed closed. There would have been no reason to, to update anyone because there would have been no new events. In fact, I think he was quite surprised to learn that the people he had delegated to had slow walked or, frankly, even done almost nothing on the case in the intervening weeks, thus requiring him to, to take action close to the election. But the other point that I do want to make, because you mentioned Russia, Tom, is that I think it's also vital to understand that the FBI and the CIA had the information from former MI6 Russia desk head Christopher Steele in summer of 2016. And they knew at that time that the year ago. of that information about Russia was strong, that Mr. Steele had a good reputation. So on the one hand, you have FBI documents, which clearly should have been seen as duplicates almost immediately. On the other, you have a allegation of a massive treasonous conspiracy with a very strong provenance in terms of the source of the information. Because Mr. Steele, as has been reported by British media very widely, is an enormously respected intelligence agent. So, and, and in fact, I've, I've seen, uh, you know, uh, several news articles suggesting that there was more than one source, uh, more than just Mr. Steele, who was suggesting that, that Trump had been compromised by, you know, as a consequence of his behavior when he was in Russia in, what, 2013 for the Miss Universe contest? 
That's correct. It was reported actually by multiple papers in uh, the United Kingdom that there was at least one Eastern European intelligence agency that had the same information that Mr. Steele had, and it is suspected that there was perhaps one other European intelligence agency that had received the same information. And so, so, yes, this is something that the FBI and CIA should have been working on diligently, aggressively, probably updating Congress due to the possibility of a high crime or misdemeanor being involved, whereas the Clinton case should have been dissolved uh, within the first week of October. Yeah, the Clinton case, there was no there there. The the Trump case, we're all still waiting to find out what the hell's going on. Um, That's right. So it, 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 it sounds, do, do you think that there was ever a time when Eric Prince and Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump or, or representatives of Donald Trump, uh, maybe Steve Bannon or somebody, um, actually sat down and had a conversation about, hey, let's organize an October surprise and let's force the FBI to to damage Hillary Clinton in the last couple of weeks of the election? I do, and, and I'll tell you why I say that, because I understand that's a very strong statement for me to uh, or, uh, to be making, or at, and certainly in my article to be implying. And here's why I say that, Tom. Uh, Rudy Giuliani's multiple Fox News appearances in late October involved discussions of Trump campaign strategy. As we all know, it was reported by every news outlet, Mr. Trump was directly involved in the development of campaign strategy at every turn. There are a lot of think pieces about him running the campaign's strategy, obviously, with the assistance of Mr. Bannon. And so unless one believes that Rudy Giuliani went rogue, even though he was the top surrogate for Donald Trump, unless you believe that he went rogue throughout the month of October and was never removed from the campaign trail, uh, we have to take his statements on Fox News about the Trump campaign strategy as being a strategy that the campaign, with the knowledge of Mr. Trump, created. It is clear that that strategy was a leak of information relating to the Clinton investigation. Um, that is what the October surprise was going to be. Even Fox News' Megyn Kelly, when Rudy Giuliani tried to convince her it was something else, was clearly incredulous. So I think that that is widely accepted, that that is what the Trump campaign was going to do. Therefore, Mr. Trump would have known. As to what information was going to be released, I think that Eric Prince, as we know, is close friends with Steve Bannon. Um, Steve Bannon knew that Eric Prince was being interviewed almost daily by Breitbart throughout the month of October. So when on November 4th, Eric Prince gave a very lengthy narrative uh, of a leak from the NYPD and FBI, the idea that Steve Bannon had no idea this uh, interview was going to happen is simply not one can credit. And frankly, even if he found out after the fact, and Mr. Trump found out after the fact, the fact that Mr. Trump then made Eric Prince after the election one of his top shadow advisors uh, suggests that there was no displeasure with the fact that Mr. Prince on November 4th went on a national news uh, media network and essentially engaged in a massive domestic disinformation campaign, spreading information he knew was false about the emails from Anthony Weiner's computer. Remember, these were duplicate emails, but Mr. Prince gave the impression that they revealed numerous crimes. You can read my article and see some of them listed. Right. But the salacious crimes that Mr. Prince claimed those emails revealed uh, are the stuff of, of not just fantasy, but I would say domestic psyops. Amazing. And Eric Prince, of course, the founder of Blackwater and, and the brother of Betsy DeVos, who, who Mr. Trump has nominated as Secretary of Education. Um, right. We just have a few seconds left, uh, uh, Dr. Abramson. Uh, what can people do about this? Well, I think the first thing we have to look for is to see whether Mr. Trump attempts to fire DOJ Inspector General Michael E. Horowitz. Um, he's been assigned to look into all of this, and uh, Mr. Trump has the ability to fire him. He cannot fire Director Comey, who has a year left on his term. I think the second thing is to put pressure on the media to start asking questions about Mr. Trump's shadow government. People like Eric Prince, who are top advisors, who the campaign will not acknowledge are top advisors. Yeah. And then my hope is that what I've written will continue to put pressure on the media so that the media puts pressure on intelligence services to continue investigating the Russia story, which is where I think the definitely impeachable conduct can be found. Remarkable. The article is The Domestic Conspiracy That Gave Trump the Election Is in Plain Sight. You can find it over at HuffingtonPost.com. And uh, the author, Seth, uh, do, pro, 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 Assistant Professor, University of New Hampshire, uh, Dr. Seth Abramson, Abramson, uh, former public defender. Uh, Seth, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Tom. Great talking. We'll be right back.